you can no no matter who you are, you can make it. No matter who you are, where you are, you can make it, right? Mm. By taking personal responsibility. I think really what my job today is is to make sure that you recognize that you already have everything that you need uh, to be successful. Uh, it's already within you. Uh, it's just about taking ownership in that you will actually take action on those things that you already possess and will do something about it. The secret to personal change is found in the truth. Um, it's figuring out who you actually are. Yep. Um, and, and I think the, the best way to phrase that or to frame that would be to say that that's the first step. Yep. It's the secret because you can't do any part of changing until you figure out who you are. You can't start the other 30, 40, 50 steps along the way until you've figured that part out, which is right, who in right. the world are you? Yep. I actually just got off a phone call and we were talking about the questions that we ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe starting there and questioning what you believe about yourself, mm -hmm. what you believe your, your talent, skills, everything, questioning those things as you're looking yourself in the mirror, yeah. that's probably a good place to start. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then telling yourself the truth, mm -hmm. your failures, your successes, but you don't anchor in either one of those. Correct. Right when you're when you're when you're doing this and you're getting real honest with yourself, throwing an anchor in past failures or past successes will hinder your future. Both of them. So who are you? <sighs> you know what's funny? <laughs> As you were saying that, I was thinking back through the evolution, mm -hmm. um, the evolution of our business, yeah. and I had to. I had to face the truth of who I was and who I wasn't so that I could know who I needed around me mm -hmm. so that we could take a business to another level. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's hard sometimes. That's hard sometimes to look yourself in the mirror and go, okay, these are, these, you're terrible at this. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, there's this guy, Tyler, he's really good at this. Mm -hmm. And together, we'll dominate. That's where frustration is created out of judging your potential, your success or failure based on something that you weren't born to do. But how do people, how do people, <sighs> first of all, recognize that, well, maybe I'm chasing success incorrectly. Mm -hmm. I need to find my purpose. How do, how do, how do, how do you help people find their purpose? I don't That's, think they need to look outside themselves. I think they need to look inside themselves mm -hmm. and entrepreneur. And, <laughs> entrepreneur, yeah. <laughs> and figure out what makes them come alive, what mm -hmm. fires them up. I love to see people that come alive. Like, they don't have to be in our industry, they don't have to be in any industry. But if they have something in their life that, that wakes them up in the morning and they're like, man, I love doing this. Mm -hmm. Self-awareness, it's a huge buzz word, trendy topic. Everyone's talking about it these days, but not a lot of people really get into what it actually means. Uh, but there's some important distinctions with, with self-awareness. Number one, self-awareness is not about figuring out all of your weaknesses and, and working on those. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong with self-awareness. They figure out that, oh, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at that. I need to improve on this. I need to get better at that. And what happens is they spend all of their energy on the negative. When what true self-awareness and what harnessing self-awareness really encompasses is focusing on your strengths, focusing on what makes you, you, and celebrating you. There's no comparison with self-awareness. It's not who am I versus this person, so I need to increase these so that I can become that. It's about figuring out who in the world you are. Until you figure out who you are, there's no reason to even spend a second trying to develop because you're trying to develop you until you know who you is, then how can you do that?
And so it's figuring out those strengths and weaknesses, but going all in on your strengths. The weaknesses are that's just something that you gotta delegate out. You gotta figure out what things that you can avoid, what things that you can pay other people to do, get other people to do. Um, certainly that there's gonna be some things in there uh, that you may have to still do, but your focus does not need to be coming out of this um, kind of journey through self-awareness. The, the purpose is not to then spend all of your time trying to correct all the things that you're bad at so then you can become a better person. It's 100% about focusing all of your energy and building a system and an infrastructure around you to be able to do the things that are your strengths, that are your natural skills uh, and abilities. And so at the, end, at the end of the day, we're talking about self-awareness. Correct. That's, that's it. But the, the important step is obviously first understanding who you are. Um, what, do, what are your thoughts on the best way a person can really figure out who they are? Well, if you start by you start by taking an assessment of some kind, and there okay. are so many great models of human behavior out there. Myers Briggs is one that's commonly used in the industry. Fortune fives today, um, that's a great model. It's difficult to understand though, because if I've got four different yeah. letters, you know, I'm an ESFJ. Okay, what does that mean exactly? Yep. Versus I'm a high D. Now everyone's a unique blend of all of these traits. Like Joseph, I know your profile. You're a DI, and you've got some others. You've got a little bit of S and a little bit of C. My C is like minuscule. It's like a three on a scale of a hundred. So I'm about as organized as dirt. I just don't, organizational skills are not my thing. Right. But if I'm a person that takes that DISC assessment, I can clearly see, even in a, a little six page concise version that, that we have, you can say, okay, here are my strengths, here are my weaknesses, here's where I'm good at, and it will show you potentially what careers suit me. So the reason why, why discovering the truth is so important is because every single <laughs> self-defeating behavior, so if you think about self-defeating behaviors, every th single self-defeating behavior in your life is a lie that you believe. You know, think of like, if I, if I can just do this, then I'll get that. If I just do this, then I'll be happy. If, uh, I, yeah. if I do this, people will like me. If I do this, then I'll be successful. All those little things, like every, you can look back to every single problem in your life, every single time that you've been through struggles and had obstacles, mm -hmm. It was all because of different lies that you were believing at 100%, that time. 100%. And obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. but being able to look back on your life and say, okay, all of these things that have happened, now who really am I? Until you figure that out, you're building a foundation that's just fake. And so if you build something just in the real world, if you build something on a fake false foundation, anytime it an obstacle, it's gonna crumble. Yep. And so you can't begin that process of personal change until you build a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. So the starting point is understanding the truth of where you're at. Right. But that's not where that's not the who statement, you are. it's not where the statement ends. And that's not who you are. And it's not where your life ends. Yeah, right. so, so those things, those things you did, those things that happen, those don't define who you are. Those are just right. things that happen. <laughs> That's the best definition, basically, of what he just said of self-awareness. Self it's not about, when you, when you really discover who you are, it's not about one person being better than the other. It's about celebrating who you are, celebrating your strengths, celebrating the things that make you, you. Not mm -hmm. focusing on the weaknesses, focusing on yeah. the things that you lack. If people spend the amount of time that they spend on worrying and complaining about the things that they're not good at, if they took that energy and used it on what they're good at, oh my they would be a completely different scenario. If you just double down on what you're good at. No matter who you are, when you're watching this podcast, we want you to take a look in the mirror and, and, and take the handcuffs off by taking full responsibility. Mm -hmm. By going, hey, it's your fault. Everywhere you are right now, it's your fault. And it's funny you bring up the... Uh, you said the uh, first step is admitting it, right? We were laughing earlier, not laughing, but, but the, uh, I had a saying that we we're gonna talk about, and it's an offshoot from one of the greatest organizations on this earth, which is Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, it's God grant me this, the serenity to whatever they're saying is, yeah. right? But this one, this one switched just a little bit, and it's uh, grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, the courage to change the one I can, and the wisdom to know it's me. <laughs> Just think about power and taking ownership. When you point the finger at someone else, you give them all the power. When you place blame on any situation, if you place blame on someone else, you give them the power. Oh, I failed at this because of him, because of her, because of this situation, because of this company, because of this environment. You took all the power away from you and you gave it to them. By taking ownership, what you're doing is you're taking back the power. 
and you're able to harness that to do whatever in the world that you want to do. Uh, but it's all about power. So I'll tell you just a little bit about my story because that was my story. Like I was pointing fingers. I was playing the blame game. Um, three and a half years ago, uh, having gone through a bunch of different trials and, and tribulations, struggles, uh, a lot of pain, uh, through a, a terrible divorce, through a terrible termination from a career, and then kind of this downward spiral of sales job after sales job and a fear of going all in and having that being taken away from me. So just a pure contentment with just sitting back, blaming everything on everybody else, and allowing other people to feel sorry for me. I, I, I felt comfortable sitting back and saying, oh, these things happen to me, feel sorry for me, and just was, quite frankly, it was just lazy uh, for a number of years. And it wasn't until I turned that hand around and pointed at myself and took personal responsibility, AKA took ownership, that everything started uh, to change. So many of you out there right now are playing the blame game. Uh, it's probably one of the most common struggles that I see or one of the most common obstacles that people have to get past in order to make it to that next level. It's playing the blame game. And so by taking ownership, you take back all the power. By becoming more self-aware, you're able to discover what these things are to begin with. And so the, important in that, the importance in that is that statements of I am are the most powerful statements that you could possibly right. state about yourself. True. I am this. I am that. And so as you, as you get to this truth and ask yourself these difficult questions about the things that have happened, it's not stating those as I am statements because I've been overweight my whole life. Well, I am not fat. Like you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't put an anchor in that. Right. You would want to put a new anchor in what you're working towards, which is I am fit. Right. Because if you focus on I am fat versus I am fit, then you'll be fat the rest of your entire life. Exactly. And, and you've anchored in that and that's why you're standing yeah. in front of the mirror, buck naked and yeah. you jump up and down and everything jiggles. <laughs> I mean, it's it's yeah. kind of a it's a good process. If you want to talk about health that way, you jump jump up and down in front of the mirror, buck naked, and everything jiggles, and you go, "Yep, fat. Yep, yep, fat." Well, you've anchored in "I am fat" for so long that you forgot you weren't made to be fat. You weren't made to be unhealthy, and so changing that to an actual anchored truth of "I am fit," not "I am not this." because the subconscious doesn't understand negatives. It only hears fat if you say, I'm not fat. Um, then it'll just anchor in fat, always. Yeah. And so you, you have to change the anchor. You have to throw your ship's anchor down in the correct place. Mm -hmm. And that is, I am fit. This has been my, this has been my opinion, and we started this, this company in the worst economic condition that this country's seen since the Great Depression, mm -hmm. okay? But it was always our thought process that when economy goes down, right, it represents a large shifting of, of financial resources, yeah. right? Lots of people lose money. Well, when they lose money, it goes somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, I always thought, man, when there's high gains and when there's great losses, that's the greatest time to build a business. Absolutely. Because that's the most opportunity. And 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 frankly, in this country. Right now, all you have to do is highly, be highly self-responsible, be, be, what is it called? Have, take, take personal, take personal responsibility. responsibility. You take personal responsibility on a massive scale and work hard and you'll stand heads and shoulders above everybody else. Take responsibility. Responsibility is ownership. Own the situation you're in. Own who you are first, right? Self-awareness was the first key you used. So, when Tyler was talking about self-awareness, own yourself. You're the CEO of your own life. You're the president and you have a you business. And so some of the things that you can own about yourself are where you're at mentally, where you're at physically, own it. What you put in your body, you need to, you need to concentrate on those things. And where you are spiritually, you own that. Then you own where you are in this physical world. Like where are you at as far as business, family, 
money, sex, whatever it is you want to own there, start owning it, right? Take responsibility for where you're at, and that way you can determine where you want to go. And so I That's think, incredible. you know, the best way for us to close this out, you know, we talk so much about authenticity, about transparency, about vulnerability, and that's great with other people. Right. But how vulnerable and transparent are you being with yourself? Right. And the best way to force that vulnerability and force that transparency out of you is by looking yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Because you can only lie to yourself for so long when you're looking yourself dead in the eyes. It starts with you. It starts with your changing you. And you're the only one that can do it. You're the only one that can take the handcuffs off. And the only thing that takes those handcuffs off is personal responsibility, knowing that everywhere you are is your fault in your life. And just taking responsibility for it, come hell or high water, and then getting yourself out of that situation. You know, it's funny, looking back at these lyrics, it says, I'm, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. That's interesting that it says that's where you start, uh, is with the man in the mirror. I'm that's asking it. him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make a change. That's right. As always, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we'll see you next time. Ow!